Hello, welcome back to Char Reads and welcome to my first ever bookshelf tour. I've wanted to do one of these for absolute years and the expectations in my mind have just been growing and growing so I thought I'd wait for the perfect time when my boyfriend's on holiday so I can do this properly and rearrange everything in my living room so I can have fancy lights and my fancy camera. I even bought like a lav mic literally for this video. <laughs> So please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I make mostly book reviews um, and it's fair enough if you want to skip them sometimes, but you should subscribe for the occasional general bookish interest video like this. Every book I own is behind me. Um, I made these bookshelves myself because I couldn't find anything that fit. Originally I wanted them to be made out of plywood planks and uh, concrete bricks to make it easy, um, but then there was a slight weight issue with the old Victorian floors not liking that many concrete bricks. So now they are plywood planks. There are some uh, concrete bricks at the bottom, but the rest are supported by timber planks. Almost all of my fiction is on this side and almost all of the non-fiction is on that side. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna say the name of every single book and we're gonna start there and go down and then we're gonna come across and I think go bottom to top on that side. I'll also label each section. So in the YouTube player or in the description, you can jump around if you want to. Also, before I get started, I need to mention something that I don't think I've seen anyone else do, but it seems so obvious to me, to keep track of which books I've read and haven't read. I have all of these little stickers um, that I put on the spines of books. So gold means I've never read it before, and black means that I kind of like started it and didn't finish it for whatever reason. So if you see a book that doesn't have either of these stickers on it, it means I have read it, or it belongs to my boyfriend Brian, and I will point out which books are his, and you can tell me down in the comments whether you think he has better taste in books than I do. Okay, let's get started. So these top five shelves here are all paperback fiction. They're arranged alphabetically. I went through a whole thing the other month changing these from being rainbow ordered to author ordered and I made a video about that which I will link below. Let's talk through all the random non-book stuff in this area. At the very top we have some Lego that Brian got given for Christmas and uh, we didn't know where to put it so I said just put it on top of the shelves. Behind my head here I have um, a fake egg for japes, a harmonica <laughs> and a little music box that does the Harry Potter theme. This is a little stand I laser cut to hold up uh, catalogues in my master's exhibition. But I like to occasionally use it to like prop up books in backgrounds. Some old used notebooks. These are zines and special edition records from my favorite band, Los Campesinos. I love these. They're from like 2013 though. They only made four of them. Down here we have some postcards, those stickers and all my bookmarks. The first book actually is Brian's. <laughs> it's Early Irish Myths and Sagas. Flatland by Edwin A. Abbott. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, The Children of Blood and Bone and The Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi, that actually is Brian's. Uh, we have Purple Hibiscus by Tremanda Ngozi Adichie, um, Americana also by Tremanda Ngozi Adichie, and another copy of Americana. Um, they're actually both mine, but Brian wanted to read it and he read this one. And then uh, when I wanted to read it, I'm reading it now, uh, I wanted one to match my copy of Purple Hibiscus. <laughs> the Power by Naomi Alderman. Saltwater by Jessica Andrews, Salt Slow by Julia Armfield, Foundation by Isaac Asimov, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, Emma by Jane Austen, Crash by Joji Ballard, <laughs> these two don't go very well together, You Are Having a Good Time by Amy Barrowdale, Perennials by Mandy Berman, The Stars My Destination by Alfred Bester, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, The Let by Charlotte Bronte, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. We Need New Names by Noviolet Bulaweo. This is Brian's. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. The New Me by Halle Butler. There is literally a guy on a bike outside playing the Star Wars theme tune and yelling. The Fool by Albert Camus. The Spy Who Came In From The Cold by Jean Le The Long Way To A Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. Lust Caution by Eileen Chang. The Perks Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. The Girls by Emma Klein. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Girlfriend in a Coma by Douglas Copeland. Dante's Inferno. 
Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, and A Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities, and Bleak House, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I also have The Double and Notes from Underground that also has The Double in it. Then we have these gorgeous copies of Sherlock Holmes. So, A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of Four, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Return of Sherlock Holmes, The Valley of Fear, and this is a bind up of His Last Bow and the Casebook of Sherlock Holmes, all by Arthur Conan Doyle. Ella Minope by Mark Dunn. And then all these ones from Brayton Us. So we have uh, Lesson Zero, Imperial Bedrooms, The Rules of Attraction, The Informers, Glamorama, and American Psycho. Then we have Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides and The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Safran Fur. Howard's End by E.M. Forster. This is a dirty book. Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is Brian's. Peach by Emma Glass. The Lord of the Flies by William Golding. The Walled City by Ryan Groudin. Less by Andrew Sean Greer. The Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns and Licking for Alaska, all by John Green. Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy. The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Takeaway by Tommy Hazard. And The Old Man and the Sea and A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. June by Frank Herbert. Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. The Glass Bead Game by Herman Hess. The Iliad and The Odyssey by Homer. The Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell by Aldous Huxley and Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. And another copy, this is Brian's, but my one's prettier. The Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. The Children of Men by P.D. James. An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. The Vegetarian by Han Kang and Human Acts by Han Kang. On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. I Love Dick by Chris Krauss. Life is Everywhere by Milan Kundera. Crudo by Olivia Lang. And Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Solaris by Stanislaw Lem and The Siberiad by Stanislaw Lem. Taipei and Shoplifting for American Apparel by Tao Lin. The Three Body Problem by Xi Jing Liu. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. No Country for Old Men and The Road by Cormac McCarthy. No Country for Old Men is Brian's, <laughs> The Road is mine. Machines Like Me by Ian McEwan. Circe by Madeline Miller. My Year of Rest and Relaxation and Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg. Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World. Norwegian Wood. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Uh, that one's Brian's. And Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. Mary by Vladimir Nabokov and Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. The Chaos Walking Trilogy by Patrick Ness. These are all Brian's, so Knife of Never Letting Go, Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men. Everything I Never Told You and Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. The Old Kingdom Trilogy by Garth Nix, so Sabriel, Le Royal, and Aborson. My Little Orwell Collection, so Homage to Catalonia. Down and Out in Paris and London, Keep the Aspidistra for Lying, Animal Farm, and 1984. Then we have Ovid's Metamorphoses, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett, Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, this one's Brian's, Lanny by Max Porter, The Overstory by Richard Powers, Wide Saga SSE by Jean Reese, The Notebooks of Malt Laureed Brige by Rainer Maria Rilke.
Jesus. Um, Conversations with Friends and Normal People by Sally Rooney and Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney as well. These are the Kinkel Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, so The Name of the Wind, The Wise Man's Fear and the novella The Slow Regard of Silent Things. We Who Are About To by Joanna Russ, The Catcher in the Rye by J.G. Salger and Franny and Zoe for Esme with Love and Squalor and Raise High, The Roof Being Carpenters, and See More in Introduction, also by J.D. Salinger. Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. The Tempest by Shakespeare. Mothlight by Adam Scoville. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore, and Sourdough by Robin Sloan. Autumn, Winter, and Spring by Ali Smith. N.W. by Zadie Smith. Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck, Killing the Dead by Marcus Sedgwick, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, Dracula by Bram Stoker, Perfume Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind and The Pigeon by Patrick Suskind, Brian's Copy of the Secret History and My Copy of the Secret History by Donna Tart, uh, The Little Friend by Donna Tart and The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. Ponty by Charlene Teo, and The Bricks That Built Houses by Kate Tempest, this is Brian's. Walden by Henry David Thoreau, A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole, Flights by Olga Targashuk, A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tals, Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev, The Aeneid by Virgil, The Colour Purple by Alice Walker, Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells and The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. A Trip and Other Stories by Ellie Williams. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf and Orlando by Virginia Woolf. A whole bunch of gorgeous John Wyndham books. So we have The Secret People, The Day of the Triffids, The Crack and Wakes, The Chrysalids, The Midwich Cuckoos, Trouble with Lycan and Plan for Chaos. The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara and A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. We by Yevgeny Zamyatin and The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. On this shelf we have a lovely pastel that Brian's friend Laura did for us. And behind it there's some boxes and then there's some used field notes notebooks and a few unused, and also a field notes calendar. On this side, we have my collection of Stoic literature or Stoic adjacent literature. So we have Meditations by Marcus Aurelius and another copy of Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Happy by Darren Brown. Uh, Selected political speeches by Cicero that I think my Latin teacher gave me. The Art of Happiness by Epicurus. Discourses and Selected Writings by Epictetus. On Human Freedom by Epictetus. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Two copies of The Obstacles Away by Ran Holiday because I like to give it away a lot. Don't know why these have (laughs) stickers on them, I've read it so many times. Uh, Examined Lies by James Miller. And two copies of Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Also have On the Short List of Life by Seneca. A very short introduction to Socrates and a very short introduction to Stoicism. Also here have these little wooden books that are just little kind of graphic books that explain uh, mathematical or physical concepts. So we have that one, Harmonograph, a visual guide to mathematics of music. Uh, Lee, dynamic form in nature. Symmetry, quad erat detum strandum, beauty in mathematical proof. Sacred geometry and sacred numerals. And then this is where I jam my video equipment. Down here we have my little Legolas figurine, which is covering up a screw. <laughs> the Next Person You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albon, this is Brian's. The Course of Love by Alain de Botton, also Brian's. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. The Best Short Stories by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The Best Early Stories of F. Scott Fitzgerald. House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. 
Washington Black by Ezzy Edugian. Uh, this one's Brian's. Um, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Tree of Codes by Jonathan Safran Foer. The Fist of God by Frederick Forsyth, which Brian stole from our holiday home. <laughs> I have two copies of An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, this one is signed and is different, has a different binding, weirdly. Here we have the rest of the hardback and outsized fiction. So my copy of Beautifully Foolish Endeavour by Hank Green that I just got the other day. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. H.P. Lovecraft's Complete Fiction. The Space Trilogy by C.S. Lewis. Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss. Colourless Zukuru Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage by Haruki Murakami, complete with sticker set. <laughs> Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, that's Brian's. A very weird copy of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. The Shore by Sarah Taylor. Salome by Oscar Wilde and The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde and Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Down here we have my Harry Potter stuff, starting with my handmade wand with handcrafted chainmail cap. Then we have a copy of Harry Potter's film Wizardry. I actually have the whole giant, uh, like <laughs> cost my like 500 pounds collection of Harry Potter film books, but I don't want to display them constantly on my shelves. We have the Harry Potter coloring book and the first four illustrated Harry Potter editions. So this is Philosopher's Stone, illustrated by Jim Kay, and they're fabulous. Chamber of Secrets, Prison of Azkaban, and Goblet of Fire. These are really jammed in there. My Harry Potter Blu-ray collection. I just bought a new set of the paperback books because I really like the design of them. But behind them <laughs> is my old set of adult Harry Potter copies, they just got too ragged and a few bonus books, Jesus. Harry Potter à l'école de sorcier, Harry Potter in French, because why not? A bonus copy of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Harry's Potter et philosophy lapis, Harry Potter in Latin, because also, why not? The original screenplay of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And down here I also have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Quidditch Through the Ages and The Tales of Beedle the Bard. Over here we have the same situation with my Tolkien collection, so Rover Random by J.R.R. Tolkien. And I feel like taking these out will take too long, but basically all of the Harper Collins um, Deluxe hardback editions, and also some Harper Collins Clockman edition. Actually, I will take this one out because it's so beautiful. Look at that. Over here I also have a biography of Tolkien by Michael White, um, The Legend of Sigurd and Gudrun, and a paper copy of The Silmarillion. As we're finishing up on this side of the room, I've got to show you these three boxes under here, which are full of field notes notebooks. These ones here are all my old travel notebooks and uni notebooks and that kind of thing. Like if I pick one out. America, the first America book of 2015, Turkey 2014, good times. And these two boxes are full of unused notebooks. I am such a field nut is what they call themselves. These ones are mostly special editions and these ones are the regular ones or like just random one-off ones like the XOXO editions. A couple of my favourite editions are XOXO's 2016 edition, Two Rivers, the National Park series, this Snowblind edition that turns blue in UV light, and the Glitch edition for XOXO 2014. Now I've moved on to the other side of the room, we are underneath the television, and this is my collection of like design and reference books. First we have The Light Show, which is an exhibition catalogue from a show all about light in the Hayward Gallery, I think that was 2016? 2014? What are years? Walt Disney's Imagineering. Bright 2, which is all about lighting design. We have The Big Maze book, um, which was a bit of research for some for a maze project. Um, Information is Beautiful by David McCandless. The Artist as Jeweller from Diane Vennett. A chunky reference book called Manufacturing Processes for Design Professionals. Generative Design or Generative Gestaltung. The Starving Artist Lamp Work Project Book, make of that what you will. <laughs> A lovely book on the Bauhaus, which my mum gave me. 
Lolita, the story of a cover girl. This is a bunch of artists redesigning and reinterpreting a cover for Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. My favorite is this one by Jessica Hish. Edition four of the manual, which is a web design magazine. Death, which is another um, museum catalog from an exhibition at the Welcome Collection. Mazes for Programmers by Janice Buck. Generative Art by Matt Pearson. The Nature of Code by Daniel Schiffman. This, oh, Rosetta. <laughs> this is my friend Howard, um, who did my masters, made a thing where you would, um, you would authenticate your Gmail account and it would create a zine based off the content of your email. <laughs> Spoon Carving by E.J. Osborne. Grid Systems by Kimberly Elam. Gross Ideas. It's a collection of short stories from architects about kind of like speculative futures. This is where the print above my fireplace comes from the graphic novel in this book. Abstract Logo and Monogram Logo and The Seats of London by Andrew Martin, which Brian gave me for Christmas. And it's just all of the maquettes, all of the different um, seat patterns from the underground and buses and stuff. This here is a very random shelf. On the left hand side, we have some random things <laughs> and stories for children by Oscar Wilde. Uh, Dory's illustrations for Paradise Lost. I have a couple copies of Lula and O Comely. I don't know why I have this collection of magazines because I used to own loads of magazines. Have a co um, Cosmopolitan from 20... Oh, it's my dear friend Stephen Bridges. <laughs> Look at all your favorite YouTubers from 2017. <laughs> also have the Mazda magazine here, which I'm in. This is me in a magazine. Here we have five out of six, which is a little bit tragic, um, of the Hobbit, uh, making of the Hobbit kind of like um, art and design. These are really cool. And at Weta Workshop, the people that did all of the special effects for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, a bunch of other things, um, they released these two books, uh, 20 year celebration of their digital side and um, their workshop side. So much inspiration. These are all graphic novels or comics, the most of them are Brian's, but uh, we have The Hobbit by Tolkien, that's mine. WW News, don't know what that is. <laughs> um, Odyssey, which I regret buying because it's all in papyrus. The Flintstones, volume one. The Authority. Batman something, something Neil Gaiman. Paper Girls, which I have read, it's actually very cool. V for Vendetta by Alan Moore, this one's mine. Something to do with Batman, something to do with Superman. The Fifth Beetle and The Arrival by Sean Tan, which was a gift. Okay, this is where I have to admit that there's a secret stash of shame books behind the TV. Um, so these are just like series that we don't really have anywhere to put or just really ugly. Uh, so these are Brian's Malazan books. We have all of the Game of Thrones. Uh, we have a copy of Northern Lights. Have, um, Brian and I both had copies of um, the King Killer Chronicles. So this is the second copy. Uh, the Divergent Trilogy, Hunger Games, a giant book on the Song of Ice and Fire, um, Hardback of Allegiant and Hardback of Clariel by Garth Nix and Programming Book by Brian. So there you go, you know our secret. This first shelf down here of my nonfiction, God, I don't want to take out of these piles. So we're just gonna say all of the names of these things. These ones are all the Penguin Little Black Classics that only cost ATP, which is why I just have so many of them and haven't really read many of them. We have Aphorisms on Love and Hate by Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, Traffic by John Rushkin, A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift, On the Beach at Night Alone by Walt Whitman, Caligula by Suetonius, The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen, Circles of Hell by Dante, The Telltale Heart by Edla Edgar Allan Poe, Gooseberries by Anton Chekhov, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Socrates' Defense by Plato, The Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti, Sinbad the Sailor, um, Antigone by Sophocles, Lord Arthur Savile's Crime by Oscar Wilde, The Night is Darkening Around Us by Emily Bronte, uh, A Pair of Silk Stockings by Kate Chopin, It Was Snowing Butterflies by Charles Darwin, I Hate and I Love by Catullus, Cassian from the Beautiful Lands by Ivan Turgenev, A Slip Under the Microscope by H.G. Wells, something I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, uh, A Nervous Breakdown by Anton Chekhov, and Only Dull People Are Brilliant at Breakfast by Oscar Wilde. Next we have the glorious Great Ideas series. I have all of the first 20 and then a few random ones 
after that um, and they all have absolutely stunning covers but again I'm not going to show you all of them. We have a vindication on the rights of women which should be down here. The first two are actually over there in my stoicism part, they're on the shortness of life by Seneca and meditations by Marcus Aurelius. We have Confessions of a Sinner by St Augustine, The Inner Life by Thomas Kempis, The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli, On Friendship by Michel de Montaigne, The Tale of a Tub by Jonathan Swift, The Social Contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, The Christians and the Fall of Rome by Edward Gibbon, Common Sense by Thomas Paine, Another Vindication on the Rights of Women uh, by Mary, Mary Wollstonecroft, uh, On the Pleasure of Painting by William Hazlitt, Communist Manifesto, On Suffering the World by Arthur Schopenhauer, On Art and Life by John Rushkin, On Natural Selection by Charles Darwin, Why Am I So Wise by Friedrich Nietzsche, A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, Civilization Its Discontents by Sigmund Freud, Why I Write by George Orwell, and then we get onto the second lot, Confucius's first 10 books, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, The Symposium by Plato, Sensation and Sex by Lucretius, An Attack on the Enemy of Freedom by Cicero, Revelation and the Book of Job, Travels in the Land of the Kublai Khan by Marco Polo, The City of Ladies by Christine de Pizan, How to Retrieve True Greatness by Baldassare Castiglione, Of Empire by Francis Bacon, Of Man by Thomas Hobbes, Urn Burial by Sir Thomas Brown, Miracles in Idolatry by Voltaire, On Suicide by David Hume, On the Nature of War by Karl von Clausewitz, Fear and Trembling by Soren Kierkegaard, Where I Lived and What I Lived For by Henry David Thoreau, Conspicuous Consumption by Thorstein Veblen, The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus, Eichmann and the Holocaust by Hannah Arendt, Books vs. Cigarettes by George Orwell, Utopia by Thomas More, Consolation in the Face of Death by Samuel Donatelin, the Executioner by Joseph de Maistre, Of the Dawn of Freedom by W.E.B. Dubois, Hosts of Living Forms by Charles Darwin, Some Extraordinarily Popular Delusions by Charles McKay, The State as a Work of Art by Jacob Burkhast, Silly Novels by Lady Novelist by George Eliot, The Wolfman by Sigmund Freud, and Nationalism by Trabindranath Tagore. Then over here under the foot we have um, three Penguin Modern Classics. We have The Machine Stops by Ian e. Forster, Terra Incognita by Vladimir Nabokov, and The Sexes by Dorothy Park. I think this one's Brian's, maybe? And then, much like with the Little Black Classics, these are the Penguin Moderns, um, which were one pound each, which is why I have so many. Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr. Television Was a Baby by Allen Ginsberg. The Breakthrough by Dathry Du Maurier. The Custard Heart by Dorothy Parker. Food by Gertrude Stein. The Three Electro Nights by Stanislaw Lem. The Black Ball by Ralph Ellison. Investigations of a Dog by Franz Kafka. Create Dangerously by Albert Camus. The Missing Girl by Shirley Jackson. The Vigilante by John Steinbeck. Three copies of The Distance of the Moon by Italo Calvino because it's maybe my favourite short story, I like to give these out to people. The Master's Tools Will Not Dismantle The Master's House by Audre Lorde. I think that might be Brian's? Did I read it? I'm not sure. The Finger by William S. Burroughs. The End by Samuel Beckett. Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. No idea why I have two of them. The Peers of the Homeless Knight by Jack Kerouac. The Duke in His Domain by Truman Capote. The Garden of Forking Paths by George Louis Bourges. Fame by Andy Warhol. And Lance by Vladimir Nabokov. Finishing off this section, we have a beautiful book called Schematics A Love Story by Julian Hibbard. This is a picture book and it relates um, kind of strange uh, diagrams with poetry and I just love it. I understand now you are my mirror and I shall reflect you. On this end of the shelf we have some cookbooks. So we have three that my dad bought me for Christmas that I'm never going to open up. We have Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nosrat which I bought Brian. The Dirty Dishes by Isaac Carew that my mum bought me. Have the Mildred's Cookbook, which we inherited. Eat Up by Ruby Tando and Free the Tipple, which is a cocktail book with some badass women in it. The next shelf up here is what I loosely refer to as my business and productivity section, um, but we always have some random ones on the end over here. So here we have the GCHQ puzzle book, which my dad gave me. Um, the Small Business Startup Workbook. <laughs> I Can Start Your Business by Russell Smith. Clearly, I had a time on Amazon. Um, the Four C's by Dan Sullivan. No idea what that is. Dream Big and Hustle Hard by Abadesi. Be More Pirate. Darren Brown's Tricks of the Mind. Atomic Habits by James Clear. Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. The Checklist by Atul Gawande. Side Hustle by Chris Gillibo. Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. Just F and Do It by Noor Hibbert. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. 
The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. It should really be over there. Growth Hacker Marketing by Ryan Holiday. The Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. Arguably it should be on the shelf above. Work Like a Woman by Mary Portas. The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Better Than Before by Gretchen Rubin. You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Anything You Want by Derek Sivers. Lean Out by Alyssa Shavinsky, this is Brian's. Irrationality by Stuart Sutherland. The Creative Habit by Twyla Tharp. This point onwards is our general non-fiction that makes us seem like clever clogs. So on this side we have Women Invent the Future, a science fiction anthology. We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, is this all in author order as well? Uh, short, very short introduction to literary theory. Hello World by Hannah Fry. The Silk Roads by Peter Frankopan. We wish to inform you that tomorrow we will be killed with our families by Philip Gorvovich. Concretopia by John Grindrod. Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari. Someone's borrowed my copy of Sapiens, I don't know where it is. The Establishment by Owen Jones, this one's Brian's. Who Governs Britain by Anthony King. The Clothing of Books by Jhumpa Lahiri. The Medium is a Massage by Marshall McLuhan and Quentin Fiore. What We See When We Read by Peter Mendelssohn. The Romanovs by Simon Seabag Montefiore. Kill All Normies by Angela Nagile, that's Brian's. Uh, Politics in English Language by George Orwell. Very Good Lives, um, J.K. Rowling's commencement speech. A Brief History of Everyone Who Ever Lived by Adam Rutherford. Inside Vogue by Alexandria Shulman. The Art of Statistics by David Spiegelhalter. Basic Income by Guy Standing. Inglorious Empire by Shasi Thador. That one's Brian's. P's and Q's by Sandy Toxvig, which I bought for Brian as like a half joke and I'm slightly bitter he hasn't read it. <laughs> Talking to My Daughter, A Brief History of Capitalism by Yanis Varoufakis. That one's Brian's. Uh, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe. This one's Brian's. And a very short introduction to British politics. We also have, if I pan over here a little bit, um, some Secret Garden postcards. The Ladybird Book of the Hipster. And Brian has a copy of the Quran for no reason I can understand because he's not religious. <laughs> we are on the last shelf, can you believe it? Okay, so here we have a very small travel section, um, a map of Ireland that Brian's dad gave him, um, some local creatives in New York, a second-hand vintage tour of London and a no lovely monocle tour guide of Berlin that was given to me at a conference in Berlin. This section is all memoir and maybe it's my favourite section. <laughs> so we have The Secret Barrister, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton, Over the Edge by Michael Bain, that one's Brian's, Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, The Monk of Mocha by Dave Eggers, the Suicide Club, which is, oh, um, something to do with, it's a guy that runs a tea plantation in Sri Lanka that my brother bought me from there. British by F. W. Hirsch. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. The Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac, that one's Brian's. H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. The Spy and the Traitor by Ben McIntyre. With the End in Mind by Catherine Mannix. How to Be a Woman by Catelyn Moran. What I Talk About When I Talk About Running by Haruki Murakami. In Order to Live by Yonmi Park. Calypso by David Sedaris. Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. Wild by Cheryl Strayed. Close to the Machine by Ellen Ullman. Educated by Tara Westover. The Salt Path by Raina Wynn and The Electric kool -Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolfe, that's Brian's. And the very final section of the bookcases we have Nature which refuses to stand up straight, a tiny bit of poetry and then like my one general non-fiction book that won't fit on the shelf below anymore. Um, so I think it's time I need to build another one of these shelves up here and the same on the fiction side because we are jam-packed.
So here we have The Meaning of Birds by Simon Barnes, Around the World in 80 Trees by Jonathan Drury, that's Brian's, A Buzz in the Meadow and A Sting in the Tail by Dave Golson, Into the Wild by John Krakow, Life in the Garden by Penelope Lively, Wild Ones by John Moallam, Feral by George Mombwa, Spying on Wales by Nick Pineson, this one's Brian's, The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells, National Tract 2020 Handbook, um, and a guide of 52 country walks near London. <laughs> okay, I need to leave them like this forever now because they're standing up. Over here we have Egghead by Bo Burnham, She Must Be Mad by Charlie Cox, uh, Time and Again and Why You Are Here Briefly by Nigel Lineker, a family friend. Um, and Running Upon the Wires by Kate Tempest, that's Brian's. And the very last book on this whole tour, The Science of Storytelling by Will Storr. And there we go. Every single book on my shelves you now know. I don't know what you can determine about me from that. Absolute goldmine for a fortune teller. <laughs> if I was being a good booktuber, I would have split that into like eight different videos. That took me literally four hours to film and I'm terrified of editing it. Um, but I hope in the end it has been an entertaining watch. And definitely something I think it'll be really fun to look back on in a few years time and see what I've lost and what I've gained. But yeah, I don't plan on doing another one of these anytime soon. <laughs> if you've made it this far, I applaud you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon for another Charis video. It's probably gonna be a book review. Bye. <laughs>